Hello, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about why I choose physical media. Now, when I talk about physical media, a lot of people can see my collection in the background. You've seen all the videos on the YouTube channel. I am a big fan of physical media and I love collecting it. And it's not only just DVDs, Blu-rays, 4Ks. It's not only movies that I collect. I also collect CDs. I collect a bunch of CDs. So it's like, I collect multiple formats, I collect books, like there's a multiple forms of physical media. But I want to talk a bit more about why I'm choosing physical media and why I feel it's kind of a necessity in 2024. So stay tuned and you'll learn my thinking behind why I choose physical media. So thanks for joining me today, guys. As I mentioned, I'm going to be talking about why I choose physical media. Now, obviously, the biggest component to physical media, as opposed to streaming, is you own it. And yes, you don't own the copyright to the content that's on those products. I don't own the copyright to Bicentennial Man. I don't own the copyright to that. But I own a physical representation of that movie that can be played back at any time I choose to watch it. So I understand I don't own the copyright. I understand that but I like to have it available to me and I like that it's not online, that it's not being tracked by some huge company to say, okay, Jamie liked Bicentennial Man, he might like Jumanji, he might like other Robin Williams movies, he might like something completely unrelated to that. And I feel like as we've got more connected and more into the streaming age, so many things are fighting for our attention and you, you, you'll have that situation, you've probably had it yourself, where you, you go onto a streaming service and say, okay, I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch The Mask. Let's grab The Mask. I'm going to watch The Mask. You go on there to watch The Mask, and then you'll see something like, okay, it'll start auto-playing this trailer for like The Rock's new movie, or Stranger Things, or The Boys, or something. It'll play a trailer for something. And you will be a little bit distracted. Now, obviously, some people push through and say, okay, no, no, I don't want to see any trailers, go to the movie I want to watch. But the fact that things autoplay and try to grab your attention when you're just there to watch a certain movie or something like that, it's not always appreciated. If I'm choosing to go onto a streaming service and take my time to invest in a streaming service, I don't like the idea that they're trying to sell something to me or trying to get me to watch something or other than what I'm there to watch. And it's a little annoying. And it just feels like I'm the product to them. It's like, yes, now there's ads on these services and they are trying to sell us ads. So they can learn a lot from us, from our viewing history. Whereas my DVD and Blu-ray and movie and CD likes and all that stuff, it's all offline. I can't really be tracked. It's like, yeah, I'm sure there's a way to track what's selling. But, you know, if I don't put Meteora on my iPhone or whatever, there's no way for Apple to know that I'm I'm listening to this album. If I'm not streaming it through like Apple Music or Spotify or I use, App I use Google Play Music or what was Google Play Music, YouTube Music now. I use that service and it feels good to have something that's not online, that's not connected to a massive empire, tech empire. And it feels good to just switch off from all of that for a while. And I like that it's not controlled by streaming. That's what I love about it. The fact that I can come in here and watch Drop Dead Fred at a second's notice and nobody on the internet will know I've watched this other than myself. I would know and I don't have to tell anyone I watched it. There's no metric to say, okay, Jamie watched this. How can we sell something to him based on him watching this? I just don't like that thing where I'm the product. I don't like that feeling that at the end of the day, I am a product to these companies and I am being monitored constantly. My taste, my likes, what I buy, what I watch on movies, what I choose to watch. It's not the greatest feeling in the world. And then you get into the idea of pay to play. And I think that's even more dangerous. Obviously, in the gaming space, I've had pay to play for a while, like EA games and certain things like that will have add-ons and DLC and not DLC but like add-ons and stuff that you pretty much can't play the game without having that. I mean when GTA 5 first came out or online GTA 5 online everyone could play that game and then over time because there's been so much microtransactions in that 
it's kind of ruined the economy on that game. So I don't agree with pay-to-play either, and that's why I have a physical representation of certain games, like Spider-Man, for example. And that lies another question. Preservation as well. I am preserving stuff in their original intended form before all the add-ons, before all the other stuff. I own the copy of Spider-Man on PS4. And you might say, okay, but do you own the PS5 version? Yes, I do own the PS5 version. I bought, I got it as a bonus for buying uh, Spider-Man, I believe, Spider-Man 2 or... Yeah, it came as a pre-order thing. And I got Spider-Man number one remastered. But with this version, this has the original character model for Peter Parker. And I can choose to play this version. There is no changes to this version in terms of the character model. I don't like this idea that you will own nothing and you will be happy. I mean, yes, streaming is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. It is cheaper in large parts than most things, even though the prices keep going up year after year after year because a lot of companies are starting to become monopolies in the space. And you will see it continue to go up. It is rivaling cable now. A lot of people complained about cable back in the day. And in Australia, we had Foxtel. A lot of people complained about that. But now you're seeing the online space become that as well. I mean, it might not be the same, exact same as it was, but it's definitely going that way because that was profitable to them and they knew they could sell stuff. They knew they could market to people. And I just don't like this idea that, yes, you'll own nothing and be happy, but also you kind of are at the mercy of the streamers and also the studios and also the directors. As I've mentioned lots of times on this channel, and I know I kept bringing it up, but let's say I didn't want to watch Terminator 2, the modern transfer that James Cameron has approved, and this is what he calls the definitive version, the way he wants it to be seen. This is the way Cameron ships this movie now. If I don't want to watch that version, if, if I was only on the streamer, I wouldn't have any option but to watch this version. Obviously with Blu-ray, I have the option to watch Terminator 2 on this. And if I had the DVDs, I could watch that. I have it on Laserdisc, I can watch that as well. But do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I like the idea that I can kind of, if I don't agree with a change in a movie, or I don't agree with what I, what I feel is a mistake, then I can rectify that. And I can choose to watch the Blu-ray version. I can choose to watch an older version. Like, off to my side here, I have the, where are they? I have the limited edition Star Wars movies, and these have the original cut, the theatrical, of Star Wars. Now, not since 2006 when these came out, have the theatrical versions been seen on a physical release, and that's a big problem. But by owning these, I am showing that, hey, I want to support, I want to support this version, I want to support the studio who puts it out, I want to see a HD version of that, I want to see, I want to see the theatrical preserved. And that's what I'm saying when I bought these. I was saying, yes, this is the way to go. And then obviously they haven't revisited that since. Now, that's not to say like, that's not to say that, hey, you should run out and buy all your favorites on physical media straight away. Like, obviously you can't do that. It's not sustainable for everyone. Like you have to choose what you love and you have to choose. Like I didn't put all this together overnight. This was put together over like five to 10 years. You know, it's not something I just woke up and said, let's go out and buy what is this, 3,000 Blu-rays? It's not one day I just woke up and said that. It's like, okay, buy a couple of hundred a year, like, you know, add a couple here and there, and then slowly over time, it's grown. And that's another thing, like, with Star Wars especially, I'm supporting the studio because I'm trying to send a message that, hey, I want to see that. I want to see the theatrical version. Now, obviously, people will say, oh, but, you know, you can get 4K 77, and obviously, I'm aware of the other means to get that movie, and I also buy the 4K Blu-rays because I wanted to have a version of 4K 77, but at the same time, you know, obviously, I'm very cautious about, I want the people who created that movie and also the studio on that to still know that people are interested in that movie. Obviously, they would be looking at the download rates as well. Don't get me wrong. I don't believe for a second that Disney's just sitting there saying, oh, what is 4K 77? They're all over that thing. They're probably looking at daily how many times that's been downloaded off the internet. I, I trust that Disney will eventually put it out there, but I'm not going to hold my breath for it, you know? And that's another thing. 
when I go out and buy physical media, it's going back into the industry I love, film, TV, the entertainment space, it's going back in. My money goes directly back to the studios. Like one really good movie, where is it here? It's somewhere in drama, where is it? There it is, Goodwill Hunting. I'm just gonna grab it off the shelf, give me two seconds. If I can get it out, there we go. Now Goodwill Hunting is an interesting one because this didn't make its money back in its theatrical run. And when you hear interviews with Matt Damon and I believe uh, Ben Affleck may have done, did an interview about it as well, but mostly it was Matt Damon who did the interview that I heard. He talked about, hey, Goodwill Hunting made a lot more of its money back from the Blu-ray, from the DVD release back in the day, from the VHS release. That's how it made a lot of its money because people were going to pick it up. They weren't necessarily going to the movies to watch it, but the filmmakers get a bigger cut of the distribution on physical media. So I try to support that. I think it's good that the filmmakers are getting it rather than the studios with Disney Plus or a Netflix or a Amazon or Paramount, even though Paramount could really use the business at the moment. I know what's going on with Paramount. But you know what I mean? Like, I like that it's going directly to the filmmakers, or at least a large portion of it was going to the filmmakers before they messed up the system. And that's another thing. Like, something like Shawshank Redemption is another one up there. Shawshank Redemption was a movie that didn't make a lot in the cinemas. It made some money, but it didn't make as much, near as much, as it did when it came to VHS back in 95. It was the number one rental of 1995. And, you know... Filmmakers get a bigger cut of physical media. And also, it gives me the librarian status of like, I want to preserve these things. I want to have them available to me in their intended form, or at least as close to intended form. Now, obviously, you're not going to get that with some 4K releases. A lot is being altered. A lot is being changed. And that's what I mean. I might not agree with Lord of the Rings transfer, but I can go back and watch the Blu-ray version. I can go back and watch the DVD version. I've got Pirates of the Caribbean on 4K as well off to my side here. But, you know, if I don't like Pirates of the Caribbean, I haven't watched this one on 4K yet, but I've heard reviews about this. If I don't like that, I can choose to watch the Blu-ray versions. I can go back and watch DVD. There are other versions. Whereas if you're online, you're at the mercy of who you're buying it off or who you're streaming it off. And it's just, I like the old ways of doing things. I like the old system that was, hey, yeah, okay. It's, I get this is not practical for everyone. I get a size of this collect, the size of this collection is not practical for everyone, especially in a cost of living crisis, in a housing crisis. I get it. But for me, it is a reflection of myself. It is something that I look at and I'm like, hey, this reminds me of going to Video Easy back in the day. This reminds me of, going and browsing those shelves for hours on end, trying to find my five weeklies or my one new release or whatever, I would go in and spend hours in that shop just browsing. And this kind of recreated as close as possible without having the real thing there. And that's what we lost when we lost rental stores. We also lost the social aspect of movies. And when I talk about the social aspect of movies, I'm talking about, yes, you can go and have a water cooler talk with, hey, did you watch The Boys last night? Yeah, yeah, yeah Homelander. You know, you can still have that, but it wasn't like you walk into a video shop and you're like, huh, okay, I want to watch uh, Be Kind Rewind. Okay, um, know nothing about this movie now. Obviously, I've watched the movie. Great movie, by the way. But let's say I was walking in, knew nothing about this movie. Okay, you go there and say, huh, I don't know about this movie. You could have asked the person who worked there or even someone who was in the section who you passed, like, hey, have, do you know anything about this movie? And then you could have a conversation with people. The social aspect of movies has been lost in the digital age, and it's really disappointing. And yes, there are certain aspects where I'm just like, I'll go into JB Hi-Fi or something, and I'll be like, okay, I don't really want to talk to anyone anyways, because I kind of just want to browse. And for me, it's like an experience. I want to go in, just browse and zone out, and just be like, okay, what do I want to buy? Do I want to buy anything? And... It's not always a social aspect. And that's the same back in the video shop days. You didn't have to talk to someone there. You could have just went in, got what you wanted, went out. But it made it so much better to say, okay, I'm going to watch Life. Another great movie, by the way. I want to watch that. So, okay, I'll pick it up. But you could also say, hey, when you go to get it and rent it, you could go, okay, 
I'm getting that one. Oh, this is... And then the person serving you would be like, yeah, that's a good movie. You'll enjoy this one. Like, Eddie Murphy's really good in it. Like, yeah, yeah, tell me what you think after it. And, you know, you could have that little extra connection, you know? And I just like that it is... It's like it's a part of me. And this is a part of me. It's an extension of myself. This, the movie collection was not just done out of the blue and just said, okay, I'm just going to have a movie collection. It was done because, A, I love preservation. I love to preserve and have movies as they were intended. I have, I like multiple versions of certain movies if the chain, if the changes were bad. But I like multiple chain, I like multiple things. I like multiple different albums. Like, I've got Meteora. I've showed this as I went out to Red Eye last week. Or, no, I got this one from... I think I got this from Red Eye. But yeah, you know, I could say, okay, I've got Hybrid Theory and Me Meteora. Like Linkin Park. I did the Linkin Park video a couple of days ago. But I know there's another version of Meteora out with ac extra bonus tracks and it was like 20th anniversary. I'm definitely looking at picking that one up. Like there is stuff in CDs and it doesn't have to just be movies. It can be games. It can be whatever. Now, obviously the PS5... I don't know if this is necessarily worth picking up on peer, on a disc because I don't believe modern gaming is doing enough to preserve games in their intended form. I believe you're getting a disc, but there's not even a manual in there. There's like, you're not getting any sort of thing. Like they're not making the experience worth it. I mean, you get the disc, but what are you really getting on that? Yes, it's 1.0 version of the game, but you know, let's compare that. Like obviously you get a bit of a manual here. There's a bit of a manual at least with game stuff there. Let's go back to the original. There we go. You got a whole booklet with the PS3, Dave. Look at that. You get a whole booklet, some artwork. You know, this is what I mean. We've like modern gaming and modern movies are losing track of what made this so collectible in the first place. And yeah, I've got all three of them. Don't get me wrong. I know people are going to say, but you bought all three of them anyways. Yeah, but I've given up on preservation for the modern systems of gaming. So my catalog now is more focusing on going back to PS4 and PS3 and PS2 and picking up the games as they were intended before, you know, they'd gone away. Like I mentioned in my previous video about what I talked about. Uh, what did I talk about in my previous video? I think I talked about um, PlayStation, about, yeah, I talked about how 2K22, like the wrestling games, you couldn't go out and buy it on the store. You couldn't go on the PlayStation store and buy 2K22, WWE 2K22. That game is essentially lost to history on the store, on the PlayStation store. However, you can go and buy the disc. That's what I was talking about. I was like, you could go and buy the disc version and you could still experience that game. And yes, I know they've replaced it with a new version, but new doesn't always mean better. Like people for years were saying, oh, modern games, yeah, wrestling games, yeah, good. But we all just want a GM mode. And a lot of people still stick by WWE 2006, uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, 2007, 2008 also had it, but why? Because it had GM mode, and yes, they've brought back a version of GM mode in modern games, but it's not the same. But what I'm saying is, physical media is an experience, and I choose this experience. I choose to cater my experience to my taste. I choose to have it as an extension of myself. It's not always the correct way, I get it, it's not for everyone, but it works for me. And also, a lot of times, if I'm watching a 4K copy of something, let's just grab any random one off the shelf here. I've got Inception sticking out there. But let's just go, okay, let's go Uncut Gems. I'm sure this would be a much higher bit rate when I play it back than a stream would be. Like, obviously, you're getting the much higher quality when putting this in a player and watching it. And I like to see the extra quality. I, I mean, you won't notice that much, but... Compression is a big factor. If there's a lot of darker scenes like a Game of Thrones, you're going to notice that compression really quickly. And you're going to notice that, hey, why is this so... Why is why does the black, the dark scenes in this look so terrible? Like episode three of season eight. It's because the compression it was really messed up. But yeah, I'm hoping you maybe learned something from this. It's kind of a bit of a rant, but... Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like... For me, physical media isn't just, hey, i got to have a YouTube channel and talk about something. No, it's a way of life. It's, for me, it's something that I didn't even know if I wanted to start a YouTube channel about. It's just something that 
has become the YouTube channel's main thing because I love this. And you can see the passion when I talk about this. And you can see that it's not just a gimmick. It's not just content. It's something that I am like, okay, I might not watch it. I haven't watched this one in a while. Bringing down the house. I haven't watched anyone in a while. That is, that's an old movie. And it's full screen too. Look at this. That's another experience. Full screen. Now, full screen, a lot of people might not understand what full screen actually means. It means aspect ratio 4x3. Like old school CRT sort of old tube TV sort of aspect ratio. The square TVs. I don't know how else to, how else to explain it that's not technical. But that was built for CRTs full screen. And what it meant in a lot of older movies that were transferred early on was that you get what is essentially called the open matte version, which means that, yes, it was shot on super 35 millimeter, for example, like the mask. But because 16 by 9 TVs are the modern now, this will give you like an open aspect ratio. It'll give you a 4 by 3 but it'll show you a bit more of the top and bottom. And it won't really cut the sides because the original film was a lot more in line with this version than the modern versions because the modern versions they have to crop because 35 millimeter in a lot of aspects were a bit square you know they were built like that and a lot of studios just cropped it in like it made sense for them so when i buy the mask that is full screen as well bringing down house full screen i've also got stuart little on full screen and there are things where I see a full screen release and I'm like, I have to have it because full screen is a way of the past. It is something that's extinct now. I still have a CRT television that I don't often use, but it is available to me should I choose to watch it in its original intended form. But also seeing extra detail that isn't available on modern releases is always a beautiful thing to have. Like it's an extra little bonus. It's like why... Um, when Titanic um, 3D came out, Cameron, in a lot of instances, was using the 70 millimeter version, and that's not been seen on physical media since or before that. And you saw more top and bottom of the screen, the black bars were gone because the 3D conversion needed that. But you know what I mean? Like you get the little details, you get extra little bonuses when you buy physical media, you can choose the experience. And I've still got the version of Titanic 3D. I've still got it. But yeah, hopefully you've learned something from this rant. I am just talking about my what I, why I choose physical media. I know it's not for everyone, but I know you guys appreciate limited editing in these things. So I'm going to do limited editing to this video. I'm trying not to change anything. I mean, yes, even the even the dirty parts where I turn around, I'm like, okay, what did, what did I think about? What did I talk about with the PlayStation video? <laughs> like, you know, little things like that. I'll leave it all in because I know you guys appreciate it and... It's not corporate. It's not, it's not super clean. I know if you want super edited videos, there other people are doing it. But yeah, I am, I'm just a fan of physical media and I love physical media in this, in its intended form. I love to own it. And I don't believe streaming allows the option to preserve it in its intended form. That's why I steer clear of streaming a lot of the time when I can. And I like to support the studios. So Obviously, I mentioned the filmmakers get a bit more of the cut when it comes to physical media. And I think that's a good thing, especially when filmmakers in the industry are struggling. And I work in the industry. I work in TV and media, and I used to work in film, and I actually worked on two feature films. Major feature films, too. But you know what I mean? Like, I like to, I like to help the industry. I like to support the industry. And that's all I need to say. If you like this video, like, subscribe, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Like, do you, why do you love physical media? Jump down in the comments. Tell me what you love about it. Obviously, it doesn't have to just be movies and television and all that. Tell me about CDs. Tell me about why you collect CDs still. Why you collect vinyl. Like, tell me why, why you collect books. Like, tell me about why you collect physical media and why you love it. Obviously, books have been changed over time. Like, I've got multiple versions of Dragon Ball Z's manga as well. And like, tell me what you love about it. I love hearing from the fans about what they love. It's like, when they built this channel, it wasn't supposed to be like, hey, I'm going to make this a replacement for my income or replacement for my job. It wasn't meant to be that, and it hasn't been that. It's more, hey, I want to connect with the fans, and I want to connect with other like-minded people who love physical media. And yeah, as I said, limited editing, everything's going to be in. Um, catch you in the next one. Jump in those comments, let me know, and I'll catch you in the next one. Also, hit the like because it helps push the video up. <laughs> Stuff and marketing, boy.
Peace. <laughs>